Welcome to our program. This program is being recorded. And we're live. Hello, everybody. Parents, kids, fellow doctors. Welcome to the June 2020 Walk with a Doc Kids Sign from the Nevada chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, or the Nevada AAP for short. My name is Dr. Terrence McAllister, and I'm a pediatrician here in Las Vegas, but I'm also the Las Vegas Walk with the Doc Coordinator for the Nevada AAP. Normally, we hold our walks at Springs Preserves in Las Vegas, but during the hottest summer months from June through September, we meet up at Mount, at the Mount Charleston Spring Mountains Gateway Visitor Gateway in order to escape the heat of the Las Vegas Valley. Today, June 14, 2020, we're doing things a little bit different again. Because we are all interested in protecting ourselves and our community from coronavirus, we are holding our third virtual online walk with the doc. Now today is a very special day for the Nevada AAP. It's our four year anniversary of Walk with the Doc. For the past four years, we've been getting together on the second Sunday of every month uh, in order to have a talk about an important pediatric health topic and then to go for a walk together. We have also been holding monthly walks up in Reno, Nevada as well. Today, in honor of our four year anniversary, we are having our first statewide walk with the doc. I'd like to introduce our speaker, Dr. Mitch Strominger, who is an ophthalmologist and is affiliated with Renown Hospital in Reno. Dr. Strominger is also the treasurer secretary of the Nevada AAP. Now during his talk, I encourage you all to use the chat box to ask questions or to talk with each other. And Dr. Strominger will try to get to the questions at the end of his talk. All right, Dr. Strominger, we're ready when you are. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Mitch Strominger, and I am a pediatric ophthalmologist up here in uh, Northern Nevada at Renown Medical Center. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about vision screening. And I just wanna have a little shout out to the healing garden up here uh, that was formed by Fianna Coombe. She was actually a gardener here in Reno and at her passing set up this beautiful garden. And that's where we're gonna be filming today. Um, unfortunately, she passed away 10 years ago. It just got um, revisited and built up again and it's beautiful. So, you know, come up if you're up in the area and take a look. Um, so, a lot of you may wonder why am I wearing a New England Patriots hat? So I just moved here from Boston, Massachusetts about a year and a half ago. And I just wanna say the Vadans are amazing people and it's just been so much fun and so great to be part of the community up here. And I know, you know, we're statewide and you in Las Vegas, if you wanna send me up a Raiders hat, I'll wear that for the next walk in the dock. So what we're gonna to talk today about is vision screening. I'm talking a little bit about it and we actually have Aiden behind me. You can see him dancing a little bit in there. Uh, he's anxious to get started. We're gonna actually test him today and show you how to do some vision screening. So why are we talking about vision screening for kids? Well, it turns out that the vision is not something you're inherently born with. Vision actually develops up until around age eight. And what happens is everything from our right side of our vision field goes to the left brain and everything from our left vision field goes to the right brain. And what happens is, is there's a competition in our brains that goes on for the first seven to eight years of life. And if the vision isn't equal in both eyes, what happens is, is one side takes over and the other side um, just decreases. And that can be a permanent change. So sometimes adults notice they have trouble with their vision and it's because they have this problem. Now, typically we talk about something called amblyopia and amblyopia is a lazy eye. And why is this important? It turns out that about three to 4% of our population actually has trouble with the vision that can affect their learning, their seeing, seeing this beautiful garden. Uh, so it's really important to screen kids early on and get them to, to be seen by a pediatric eye doctor to try and help make sure their villain's developing. So there's two reasons why your vision doesn't develop properly when you're a kid. The first thing is something we call amblyopia. So amblyopia is a lazy eye or lazy vision. And why does that occur? It occurs because the light rays aren't focused in one eye over the other eye. So say 
the light rays aren't focused on my right eye because that eye might be nearsighted or maybe farsighted, if those light rays aren't focused, it turns out my other eye sort of takes over and the cells from that eye start to degrade. The other thing is you could be born with a problem with your eye. You can have a cataract or a cornea issue or something going on in the back of the eye, the film called the retina, and that also can cause the vision to be not good in that eye and that eye becomes lazy. The second reason is because the eye may be crossed a little bit. And if you all heard about cross eyes and that's something we call strabismus. So as an adult, if we were to take our eye and push it over to the side, what actually happens is, is that we would see double, right? We would see double. And the problem is in kids, they don't see double or they don't even understand necessarily what double vision means. And so what happens is, is the brain is so flexible that it actually shuts off the development for the vision for that eye. So it's really important if you notice your eye, your child's eyes crossing to get them to be seen because that also can cause a lazy eye. Now, sometimes that's really obvious, an eyes crossing significantly inward or significantly outward, but sometimes it's very subtle, it's hard to see. And the way we pick that up also is in vision screening because the vision for that eye uh, doesn't develop uh, properly. So, you know, now that we're all sort of sequestered in our houses, unfortunately, um, a lot of people aren't going to their pediatrician's visits and please do so because not only is it important to get your vision screen, but also to keep up on your vaccinations. That's really important, especially when the kids are going back to school. But one thing that you could do at home to try and check your kids vision to see if there's an issue and, you know, help out your pediatrician, you know, do a little testing at home. And if they see a problem, let them know so that you get, get referred is something we call uh, vision screening. And we like to do this somewhere about kindergarten, maybe a little bit older. The earlier you can do it, the better. Most pediatricians do a great job of doing basic vision screening when they go into the office. And some places actually do it in the school districts or health centers. But here's an easy way to do it at home. And we're going to demonstrate that now. Um, I want a little shout out to Dr. Robert Arnold. He's actually up in Alaska. Hey. And so he came. He started developing this program to try and help parents in remote areas of Alaska to do vision screening. And we're sending you some information about how to do it. Um, it's pretty easy and pretty standard. And we're gonna show you how to do it now. So if you download the forms, you can go, actually go to his website too. It's www.abcd-vision.org. And what you notice is there's a couple of things. This is actually a vision chart. I hope everyone can see it. And what it has is this four letters, and they're the H, the O, and the TV. So hopefully most kindergartners or first or second graders uh, know those letters. If they don't, here's a little cheat sheet, and you can have them point to it and maybe teach them. And the reason why there are these little bars around it, because it turns out it's a little harder to do the test um, and a little more specific for a lazy eye or amblyopia if they're crowded like this. The other thing is if you're going to touch it, don't touch inside it, touch outside because that also allows them to see a little bit better. So you want to get the best screening as possible. And then if you look at this, um, there's one line and two lines. So all you need to do is fold that over like that. And if you read on the bottom, it says the age. So for third grade, so Aiden, we're going to be testing is just going out of third grade. So we're going to be testing him at that level. And most places, the cutoff for vision is about 2040 or 2030. That's our screening. That's sort of what you need to have to pass a driver's license test. So we like to see the third graders see a little bit better than that. And just remember, this is just a screening test. It doesn't substitute for full eye examination. We're not checking 2020 vision. We're just screening to see. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have Aiden read these letters and um, if you miss two or more of the letters, then that's a, that's a positive test that the kid failed their vision screening. There's a third form on there, fill it out and send it to your pediatrician or call your pediatrician so that you could get referred appropriately. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring this down. Hey, Adrian, how you doing? Good, great. So we're gonna, in a second, maybe have Aiden take down his mask so that he can hear. You wanna do that? Go ahead, take down your mask and I'll just stand far away. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test Aiden one eye at a time. He has his glasses. If your kid has glasses, that's great. Do it with that. If they don't, which most kids might not in for the vision screening, um, then don't have them wear the glasses. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Aiden put the palm of his hand over his eye. Now it's really important 
the kids not cheat and open up their fingers like that or move that uh, hand aside. Um, you can use a patch if you have them. You can actually use a paper cup and put it over this. But Aiden's a good kid, so we're going to actually just have the palm of his hand. Okay, Aiden, so can you cover your left eye with the palm of your hand? This one. Perfect. All right, we got that down. Okay, so I set up on a tree over here. I don't know if you can see it. The chart is should be 10 feet away. It says that on the instruction. So I'm going to. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is have Aiden cover the other eye, your right eye, with your right hand. Perfect. All right. OK. You ready, Aiden? Gonna run down here and I'm gonna do the letters backwards. Ready? He did perfect. He didn't did perfect. He got all four letters. Didn't miss any, even with his glasses. So, you know, if your kid wears glasses, you wanna check and see if they need an updated prescription. You can check and see if they meet the 2040 criteria with that. And, um, you have the answer sheet, fill that out, send it to your pediatrician or bring it in for the visit. So they can say, eh, you already had the vision screen done, perfect. We'll just move on and entertain any questions and then you guys can get out for your walk. Great, thank you very much. Questions we do have a couple of questions. The first one is from Dr. Greenspawn. He's asking that her mom told her to eat carrots to help with her vision. Is there any evidence to support that carrots help with your vision? Well, you know, beta carotene and all sorts of vitamins are really important for, for vision. It's and deficient and to die oh and so you don't eat too many carrots because then your skin turns yellow and you'll look like a rabbit but um you know all those vitamins are really important and having a good balance in nutrition you know you know these kids may because of the dry climate and decreased humidity do sometimes produce a little bit of decrease in their normal oily component of their eyes this has nothing to do with vision screening so sometimes I do recommend a little bit of a fish oil or a flaxseed oil supplement to those kids. That seems to help. Okay, great, thanks. We have another question. You said you mentioned vision screening could be 2020. People are asking, what does that mean when you say somebody's vision is 2020? So 2020 is the standard vision, which is be considered a normal. And there's that E. I don't know if you've been the eye doctor. Most people have. And at 20 feet, that depends uh, five degrees. So at 20 feet, you should see a letter that says and that's 20 and that's considered normal. Um, and then you go down from there. So 2040 is typically uh, what you need with your Glavers license test here in the United States. If I, uh, you can actually consider it legally blind. So a lot of times when we do vision screening on kids, uh, we might pick up one eye that 2040 in the screen and the other eye they can't see, right? So you have to compare the two eyes and see. Sometimes we pick up kids who can't see in both eyes and therefore they need glasses in both eyes. Or sometimes we do pick up that one eye doesn't see as well as the other and that eye may become lazy or have amblyopia. And that's the concern also that we have. And we need to either treat them with glasses, sometimes patching, and if the eyes crossed, even sometimes uh, surgery to get the eyes straight. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much for all the questions that I'm seeing. So we're going to end the, the talk part now. Thank you very much for all that information. Um, at this point, we're going to go for the walk. And here's how it's going to work. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn off the live feed and encourage everybody to go for a walk on their own. My family and I will be taking pictures of ourselves as we walk, and we'll post them on the chapter's Twitter feed at AAP Nevada. And we, recommend, and we encourage everybody else to do the same so we can all share the pictures of ourselves on our walks. I encourage everybody to wear sunscreen, 
bring plenty of water, try to walk for at least 20 minutes, and enjoy the beautiful weather out there. We'll meet here again next week, uh, and that notes about next week, next month, on July 12th, uh, which will again probably be another virtual walk, but we will let everybody know what our plans are as things move along. All right, well, thank you everybody for joining us. Go ahead out there and enjoy your walk. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Great seeing everyone. Thank Have you. a good day. Goodbye.